Namaste World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. Let's watch Zogchen and Advaita. Gaudapada's Asparsa Yoga with Swami Sava Priyananda. So from my understanding, after diving into the teachings somewhat, I, I definitely see the similarities in them. So let's find out what Swami Sarva Priyananda has to say mm -hmm. as an elite scholar of Advaita. And obviously he's got to know some stuff about Dzogchen. So if you like Dzogchen or Advaita Vedanta, <laughs> please hit that like button. Really, really helps the video and the channel. And of course, subscribe. This teaching, Gaudapada gives it a beautiful name, Asparsha Yoga. The yoga of no contact. Mm -hmm. The yoga of no contact, Asparsha Yoga. So, I mean, Ranganatha Nandaji, the 13th president of our order, he was fond of this term. He used to call it Advaita Vedanta is Asparsha Yoga. It's also a yoga, a spiritual path. But what kind of spiritual path? A unique spiritual path, which is called the path of no contact. Why the mm -hmm. path of no contact? Because, you see, Brahman and the world are not enemies. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. The real and the false are not enemies. Nice. Mm -hmm. You might think, think that reality and falsity are enemies. No. Nice. Mm -hmm. What is an enemy of falsity is the knowledge of reality. You mm -hmm. see, the false snake and the real rope are not enemies. They are not contradictory. It is because of the real rope that you can mistake it and see it as a snake. Mm -hmm. The desert is not an enemy of the mirage water. It is because the desert exists that we have the illusion of a mirage water. Mm -hmm. yeah. What what contradicts the mirage, the water in the mirage, or what contradicts the false snake? Our knowledge that it is a rope, our oh, knowledge that it's okay. a mirage, no. it's not really water, okay. mm -hmm. that contradicts. Oh yeah. Mm. So knowledge of reality is the enemy of falsity. Yeah. But reality as such is not the enemy of falsity. Oh my God, in I fact, love it. Reality mm -hmm. is very kind. It tells mm -hmm. falsity, you you come and settle down here. Mm -hmm. I have no problem. It has no enemies. Make your house yeah. here. After all. If it is true that Vedanta is at all true, then we are Brahman. When? Now. Hmm. So after realization? After realization, certainly. But before realization, you are not Brahman. You are Brahman right now. Yeah. <laughs> what is this I word? Love it. it is Brahman. Yeah. It is the absolute right now. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But there is nowhere. We, do, we have no idea about the absolute. Hmm. Brahman, the absolute right now, is the ground of the appearance of this world. Mm -hmm. This world appearance has no enmity with Brahman. Mm -hmm. It is because of Brahman that this world is appearing. Yeah. It is because of Brahman that we have samsara. Hmm. Rigpa. Love it. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of Brahman is the enemy of samsara. Mm -hmm. Brahma jnana is the enemy of samsara. Not Brahman itself. Brahman itself has no enmity with samsara. Why? Because there is no real contact between Brahman and samsara. Hmm. Samsara cannot disturb Brahman. Yeah, samsara yeah. cannot harm Brahman. The rope, the false snake, cannot harm the rope. Does the rope become poisonous because of the false snake? No. no. Shankaracharya says, the water in the mirage, hmm. in Sanskrit, marumarichika, the water in the mirage, all the water in the mirage cannot, is not sufficient to wet even a single grain of sand in the desert. Mm -hmm. True. Right? Because it's not really there. Not there. So, hmm. the appearance, the false world, cannot absolutely cannot do any harm to you the, the real you hmm. because there is no point of contact between reality and falsity because reality hmm. is all that exists if two things exist then there's a question of contact mm -hmm. if two things exist but two things do not exist it hmm. only seems to be two because when you talk about when you try to enlighten a person when you give a teaching the person knows the world then you have to introduce something called God. Hmm. And then finally show that it is God alone which is appearing as you and the world. But first it seems there are two things now, world and God. Hmm. Person knows I am body and mind. Then you have to introduce something called Atma, hmm. self. Then the person thinks, okay, this is not the self, there is something called the self. But after enlightenment, that self alone appears as body and mind. Don't you alone appear as the dreamer's body and uh, the dream person in the, in the dream? All of that is you alone. Mm. So, there is, it is actually one reality. And the feeling of two, it is a in, in between interim stage. Mm. The example which I gave about the pot and the clay, the clay and the pot, mm. 
First, there is a plot. And then uh, we are told that the, the constituent of this pot is clay. There is a cause, a material cause of this pot, and that is called clay. At this point, you'll start thinking there are two things. There is a pot and there is clay. Then you examine the pot and you find top to bottom, inside, outside, it's all clay. In fact, hmm. you are hard pressed to find anything called pot. Because mm -hmm. every real know. thing there is clay. Mm. Every bit of it is clay. There is no such separate thing as pot. And finally you realize it is clay and clay alone. Pot is a name, it's a form, it's a particular use. Nama Rupa Vyavahara. The real problem comes if you stop halfway. If you're told, here is a pot, and there's a reality called clay, then you start thinking, okay, there's a pot and clay. Hmm. Then you are in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alan Watts Duality. calls it, oh, clay pot theory becomes the crack pot theory. <laughs> <laughs> Why? If you stop at this point, what happens is, then you are all the time searching for some God somewhere, which is the cause of this universe. Or when you look inside, like the Hindu dualists, the Nayaikas do, Body, mind, and some self, some atma is there separately. You keep searching. So clay pot theory becomes crack pot theory then. Hmm. That is the problem. If you stop at this point, that is why the yogis say, you have to blank out the world to realize the self. Because they think there are two things. You have to shut your eyes to the... Do you really have to shut your eyes to this lectern to see the wood here? No. If I say, see the podium. Say, yes, Swami. If I say, see the wood here, you'll say, yes, Swami, it's pretty easy. Do you have to shut your eyes to see the wood? No. Mm -hmm. To see the waves in the ocean, go to the beach? Yes, with open eyes. To see the water, do you have to shut your eyes? No. Mm -hmm. With open eyes, you can see the water. It's a change in paradigm. It's a change in your understanding. The shift is internal. The yogi, because he thinks water and wave are separate things. Gold and ornaments are separate things. You have to shut your eyes, then you can see the reality. So I'll end with a beautiful verse, Asparsha Yoga. That now we understand why it is called no contact, because there's one reality. Does the clay ever come in contact with the pot? <laughs> now you'll understand. <laughs> Ah, the, the clay never comes in contact with anything called pot. The clay is... The pot is a construct mm. which we think of. The clay, clay in that form, we call it a pot. There is no thing called pot with which the clay will come in contact. Mm -hmm. So the clay is asparsha. It has no contact with the pot. Brahman, Atman, pure consciousness is asparsha. It has no contact with this appearance of the world. So Gaurapada has this beautiful verse, a slightly mischievous verse at the end, where he pokes fun at the yogis. He says, Asparsha yoga vai nama Durdarsham sarva yogi bhi Yogi no bibhyati yasmat Abhaye bhaya darshina This teaching is called Asparsha yoga, the, the, meth, the path of no contact. And it is very difficult for yogis to understand this. It's very difficult for yogis to understand this. Why? The yogis are afraid of this path, are scared of this path, mm. because they see fear in the fearless. Abhaye bhayadarshina. They are the ones who see fear in the fearless. Mm. Open your eyes, see the picture of the princess of Kashi. No, 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 you will be attracted oh, to that. Don't okay, open okay. your eyes, mm. keep, keep your eyes closed. Okay. No. Hmm. <laughs> so, Abhaye Bhaya Darshina, they see fear in the fearless. Once you realize this as Brahman, you are the fearless. This world itself is the fearless. There is no fear here. Sri Ramakrishna says, hmm. people call it, he uses two words, Dhokartati, this world is a place of deceit and fraud. He says, but I see it as Majarkuti, a mansion of mirth. Hmm. What is the mansion of birth? mirth? This world itself, after realization. After <laughs> realization. <laughs> yeah. This world itself is Brahman, the mansion of birth. Um. Hmm. Abhaye bhayadarshina. So let us put it all together. No mind. This teaching of no mind. We noticed that because of the movement of the mind, because of the mind, we tend to think that there is a world of duality. 
world of duality leads to bondage non duality leads to freedom so no mind is the key amani bhava how do you achieve no mind the yogi says by samadhi nirvikalpa samadhi shut out the world don't get involved in the world stay in samadhi and finally give it up vivekananda said he who runs away to meditate and die in a himalayan cave has missed the way <laughs> don't look at the picture of the princess of kashi so that is one one approach to no mind another approach to no mind is given by gaurapada acharya he says atma satya anubodhena by viveka hmm? atma anatma viveka by the viveka of self and not self by the viveka by seeing that the self is eternal and not self non eternal by seeing that the self is unchanging and the not self changing hmm. by seeing finally the self is real and the not self is an appearance by this viveka you will realize the self alone is non dual hmm. advaitam when you come to the non duality of the self in this way you have achieved amani bhava and that amani bhava is permanent it's not dependent on any kind of practice anymore hmm. you see it as very natural very good hmm. let me do a peace chant and then i'll come back for q and a om shanti 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 he hari hi om tat sat hmm. shri ram krishna rupa namastu so all ready for buddhist teachings <laughs> but it was just the title saying sokchen and obviously then sokchen the same as advaita mm mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah so i think maybe earlier in the lecture he was probably talking more about sokchen but not much in what we saw honestly i don't think so i think uh, someone just titled it because i was i couldn't find any videos talking about zokchen and advaita because that's mm. what i go like uh, mm. on youtube i typed in oh okay i wanted like someone to talk about it mm. and i think somebody realized there are no videos out there but you know mm-hmm. if you label it maybe we just click on it but um, yes yeah, so the similar i would love yeah. i would love videos mm. on that yeah mm-hmm. totally but the similarities are absolutely right. there for somebody who has studied zokchen yeah a fair bit i dived right into it right so as soon as i found out it was like the pinnacle and the tippy top of tibetan buddhism whether you believe that or ascribe to that or not i dived right into it because it's kind of like the next level of the teachings on emptiness right yep. saying that everything is the manifestation of one source one you know cosmic power and in this case it's rigpa which is uh, represented by the shirt i'm wearing right now um so yeah extremely similar right yeah. so the same thing is you know brahman the one absolute reality so so i loved his metaphors in this oh, teaching so right good. yeah i the, was so surprised like yeah, sorry but cuz you really have <laughs> to think about it and very extremely similar like basically exact to you know the buddhist teachings mm-hmm. and you know in the you know the buddhist masters like uh you know nagarjuna and the one the other ones that dived right into emptiness and they really studied it and they extracted all of that wisdom saying that you know whatever you deconstruct or hold in mind is still just a mental construct and a label right so there is no pot in the sense that oh you know it's all clay and then that's the reality that we live in there is no world that is separate from brahman but but they're not enemies in the sense that so knowledge of brahman is the enemy of delusion and ignorance but brahman itself has no enemies because it's the source of everything and then that's when he's talking about the self once you realize the self within mm-hmm. then you only see truth and reality and then that's when so the duality of thinking that okay here i am body and mind and then self is separate and then when you realize self then you see that the self is the body and mind right which is that other saying that the world is illusory only brahman is real and then brahma is the world so there's brahman. that so there's that separateness yeah brahman so that separateness and that duality from when we're coming from you know mind and in this case the dualistic ego thinking mind that perceives us as separate so pr- before enlightenment yeah we see duality and we see things as mm-hmm. separate but in reality so it's taking the clay and the pot you know metaphor to a totally higher level in the sense that think of the clay is brahman 
and the pot is the world, right? And then we see them as separate, but mm -hmm. in reality, no. It's like the, the universe is literally Brahman, right? And there's only that, right? I know the quote now. Yeah, okay. The world is unreal, only Brahman is real. The world is Brahman. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And it's up to us to realize it. Let's realize it, world raises. Yeah. Yeah, so extreme, extraordinary similarities. So this is where, mm -hmm. you know, all religions and traditions that, you know, just become separated over time. When you go to the core and the root of what they're teaching, an enlightened, realized being is teaching the truth with the, you know, in their culture, in their time, with their words. But ultimately, they're all pointing at the same thing, which mm -hmm. is fascinating because you can see the similarities in Advaita Vedanta you know, and what Shakyamuni Buddha was teaching, right? Mm -hmm. Non-duality, right? And then in a Tibetan tradition, you got Rigpa, right? And emptiness, and what does that teach? So empty means that we don't exist inherently from our own side, right? The pot does not exist inherently from its own side by its own pot power. It's only the clay that allows it, you know, to exist. And then beyond the clay, there's what is it? Just consciousness, right? Nice. Okay. So the subjective awareness of our own mind, which is the foundation and the ground, right? Which allows everything to manifest and exist. So we are living in an extraordinary time, peoples. Now is the time. Let's make it happen. To raise yourself. <laughs> and raise the world. Thank you so much, everyone. We love you. Mm. Peace. Peace.